1170 WCLN 1170 Radio and Cable Channel 16 are pleased to present We Should Know, hosted by J.W. Simmons, an upbeat, informative look at people, places, and issues facing our community. This education-based analysis of issues will remain positive and informative as we consider closely what we should know. Hello, folks. Welcome back. We Should Know is on the air. We're coming to you on site today from the what used to be the Wellness Center here in Sampson County, now is known as the Y, or better yet, the YMCA is now open and in business right here in Clinton, North Carolina. This is big news. As you'll recall, a while back, we had Jared Barrier, who is executive director, on the show, and we talked about what the plans were. We're now on site, and we're going to look at some of the results of his planning and the kinds of things that his team has worked out to make this beneficial to you and in the future. Jared, thank you for being with us today. Thank you, JW. Jared, as I stand here and I look about at what's happening in this facility, it's, it appears to be not only is it a team effort, mm -hmm. but it's a community effort. Absolutely. Is it meeting your expectations? Were you able to open with the moment and timing you wanted to? Yeah, you know, we, I feel like the time we opened was the perfect time. I mean, we had some, we had some delays due to construction and some, some staffing concerns, but, but really, I mean, it could not have come together at a better time. I mean, we, we had some great support last week with our grand opening and throughout our soft opening the week before that. And really just the, the support we've had from the community and the attendance here in the facility has been amazing. Well, as you, as you know, and I think we talked a bit about off air, uh, the YMCA in any community adds not only gravity and importance as it relates to economic development, as it relates to growth in the community. Are you getting a lot of response from the business community and the support that you were expecting from community leaders? Absolutely. We had, with our grand opening last week, the grand opening ceremony, we had a lot of support and participation you know, from some local community leaders and business leaders. And, uh, you know, everybody we've gone to so far, you know, talking about, um, you know, some corporate memberships here at the facility where, you know, employee employers could potentially give their employees a discount to come and uh, join the, the Y. Um, you know, we, we've just, if I feel like the sky's the limit, you know, we're dealing with everybody here in the community. Everybody is very excited, um, you know, from just the individual to, to our local business leaders. One of the things that strikes me, and I, and I mention this quite often on the show, is that uh, this community and, and literally throughout rural North Carolina, and you see it in urban areas, but particularly in rural areas, you see a lot of steeples and a lot of churches. Mm -hmm. Do churches have the potential of coming and saying, we want to sponsor or have a, a membership that includes or is inclusive of our members? Is that something that is possible? Have you looked at that? Yeah. So it's, it's not something we officially have in place right now, but it's something that, you know, previously with the Wellness Center, um, you know, that was something we did offer and mm -hmm. I have full, um, you know, full intentions to do the same here. And that's that to me kind of says to the community as we're talking about this, folks, here's where you can be. And here's the person that is actually running this show, Jared Barrier and his ex executive director, Jared. What I hope we can do today is uh, the kind of. I guess message to folks here in the beginning that we're going to kind of go around the facility and look at some things that, that you have now, talk about your potential and maybe vision for future expansion, uh, expansion of some of these uh, rooms. This is a huge facility. How many square feet are we talking about? So our side of it's 32,000 square feet. So I think total, I believe it's 42,000, but you know, as you know, the hospital's outpatient rehab department shares the, the facility with us. We're standing at literally at the end of one huge room here that has these dynamic windows in it and the room is full of equipment. Uh, I, I just alluded a while ago and, and uh, talking about the, the cost and, and my estimate was in the hundreds of thousands of dollars of professional equipment to improve your uh, and benefit you physically no matter what age you are. Absolutely. I mean, we have we have just about everything you would need uh, to kind of hit all those points in trying to improve your, your um, overall health. You know, we have uh, everything from high intensity to low intensity um, equipment. We have free weights. We have selectorized equipment. that's a little bit easier to use. 
Uh, it's better for beginners and better for some of our retired members. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a, a nice big cardio section as well with multiple pieces of equipment. Now, the, the entrance of this facility is, is on Johnson Street. So you, you actually would come in that door for folks that go by and, and look at the facility. It's on the corner of Beeman and Johnson, but part of the facility is still used for the hospital in the front part. Is that correct? That's correct. And so if you come in, you need to come in that entrance off of Johnson Street into the facility. There will be folks to greet you, to get you signed up. You can register. Uh, get whatever pass you need, and from that point on, uh, it's literally bliss because the weather is pretty tough outside it today. Is. We're it standing is. inside, and it's a perfect climate. It's nice. I can just tell folks that if, if you're going to do any kind of workout, whether it's walking, and as I look at this track here, it's a two-lane track. How, how long is this track, uh, Jared, as I look at it going around this huge run? I don't know the actual length, but I believe 18 laps is one mile. Wow, so a person who wants to walk could come here and get their walking in, literally in an environment that's pristine. Absolutely, and I mean, previously with the facility, we had a lot of members that would come in um, over the lunch break and you know walk a mile in, in you know, 20, 30 minutes. And I'm hoping we have a lot of members to do the same. Well, what we're going to do now is, is kind of look at some of the things that you have here give the guys time to kind of swing the cameras. Okay. Uh, we're going to look at some of the equipment and let you kind of explain what it does and the dynamic of that and how it can benefit sure. you. A lot of folks may not realize they may have something going on that the doctor may even recommend mm -hmm. uh, you to come here and work on that. And you guys are, are qualified to work with them with that. Yes, sir. We have, you know, currently we have several um, personal trainers here on staff who, who have a great background, great experience. Um, and, you know, they, they really, they really know their stuff. You know, they're kind of able to help you dial in and focus on the areas that, um, you know, you need some work, that you need a little bit of help. And those kinds, those kinds of things, I think is important because previously with the wellness center, there was this direct connection and you were part of that direct connection with the hospital. You could just literally reach over there and, and pull whatever you needed or, or if somebody needed some advice or you weren't sure about something, you could make that connection. Is that connection still viable? Yes, so we, we are hoping to continue to develop you know, relationships with local providers. Um, you know, as, a, as I mentioned, we're still here um, sharing the facility with the hospital's outpatient rehab department. So I'm hoping that we can put something in place where, you know, as, um, you know, as members and members of the community are wrapping up their treatment at outpatient rehab, we can be here as a follow-up resource to help them continue their, their treatment, continue their, um, you know, continue to meet their overall goal. One of the things we're going to look at as we look at the various rooms here is this pool area. Uh, and of course, I'd been in there before, but I just took another look at it. Uh, that's a tremendous asset to this yes. facility as well. When we get to that and, and take a look at it and start talking about it, uh, one of the things we've heard unbelievably just for the past two weeks is, is the idea that we don't have enough lifeguards. Uh, that pool, I'm sure, is going to be staffed with uh, folks that are trained to be lifeguards and, and care for folks in there. Have you had a problem with getting people to sign up to be lifeguards? Well, you know, currently there is a nationwide shortage on lifeguards. Um, and, you know, we, we lost some resources in the area a few years ago for training lifeguards. So there is a bit of a gap to fill. Um, you know, a lot of times lifeguards will start when they're 15 or 16. And then, you know, in, in an area like Clinton, um, if you can't have them, year round once they go off to college, they're usually here back in the summer. And so that's been some gaps that we've had to try to fill. And so we, we've had uh, we've had a lot of applicants and now the, you know, now the issue is just getting them through training, um, you know, because our training classes are limited. But um, within the next few weeks, we should have a should, should look much different with our staffing in the pool. One of the other things that I've noticed just since I've been here is this variation in, in age group of people. I've, I've seen small children here. I've seen folks uh, <laughs> my age and older here. And, and it, it strikes me that this is becoming a, a facility that the door is open and we'll work with whatever comes to the door. Absolutely. I mean, I, I love it. I love seeing that variation. Um, you know, anytime you can get such a wide range of people, you know, in a facility like this, I mean, it just really adds to the sense of community in the facility and um, the overall engagement. Everybody seems to be more checked in and engaged. And, and that's what's important, that we all come in and we can interact and have a good time with each other while we're focusing on our health. You visited, and I know you've looked at a, a lot of YMCA's and other areas. I mean, you've, you've got a background with the military. You've seen a lot of yeah. stuff. How does this measure up with some of the bigger, uh, quote, heavier populated locations mm -hmm. in the area? 
Well, you know, everybody um, with the YMCA, um, you know, kind of our the state level, you know, local level within our association is impressed with it. Um, I believe that, you know, whenever this was brought about, um, say in 2005, I mean, it was impressive then and it remains impressive today. And, you know, we can, I feel like we can compare with just about any facility out there. We're just a scaled down version. And, and I think the, the thing that's is really important is, uh, for example, I, I was looking at the racquetball court a while ago, and you and I talked about this off camera. A lot of folks may not be familiar with that, but that you talk about it, a, an aerobic exercise yeah. that will really yeah. knock the wind out of you. That's one of them. And, and yes. you could literally, if you're not sure, and you want to come and walk through the facility and take a look at it, the doors is open. You Absolutely. you will be happier. Some of your staff will to show folks around. Absolutely, we 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 love nothing better than to be able to take uh, people coming into the facility for the first time. You know, taking them around and just show them what we're all about. Show them what, showing them all. You know, all of our activities and amenities, um, and also trying to trying to share. You know, just our our why mission and why mindset with. Them. Yeah, one of the things that I, that I'm gonna ask you about that that I remember when the wellness uh, center was labeled wellness center. There was like a beverage bar over here somewhere. Mm -hmm. Is that something coming back? So it won't come back in the same capacity that it operated before, but we are, you know, we are going to be able to offer just basic refreshments, uh, right. maybe some bottled drinks. And I'd love to offer coffee at least for part of the year. So it's, it's always been a hit here. So. I'm looking forward to that. What I'm, what I'm hoping we can do uh, is get as much time in as we can to actually visually look at some of the equipment, experience uh, from the part of some of the folks that are here today. I'm, I'm hoping to be able to talk to some of those people great. and kind of get a comment from them why they are here, uh, what brought them here, and what is sustaining uh, their point of view of being here and being part of this facility. So uh, to you and your staff, uh, we start out by giving you kudos. You. And we're going to stop now and take a quick turnaround, and we're going to look at some of this equipment and let you kind of tell us what's going on with it, what's happening. Yeah, sounds great. We'll be back in uh, just a moment, folks. Stay with us on the radio side. Tell folks to Star TV, and you can see it. Radio side, we'll keep talking to you. We'll be back in a moment. Thank you for being with us here on the We Should Know Show. We will be right back after these messages. If you run a business, you need sales. To get sales, you need customers. To get customers, you need exposure. Let our team of experts craft and produce the perfect video ad to reach your intended audience while making the most of your advertising dollars. Call 1-800-706-6538 or visit starcom.net to contact our Star Communications production team and get your business moving to the next level. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're on site today at the Wellness Center, what it used to be, at the Y, what it is. And today we are at the YMCA in Clinton, North Carolina, right here on the corner of Beeman and Johnson Street. The entrance is on Johnson Street. We're talking with the executive director, Jared Barrier. Jared, we turned around and folks are seeing some of the equipment we alluded to a while ago. And we're in that workout area that includes, um, should I say, resistance. Mm -hmm. Uh, to include weights and to include other things. And you see some folks in the background uh, working out on that. Tell us what we're looking at here, uh, particularly it relates to uh, things that I, I'm just seeing a lot of dollars invested in equipment. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the floor for a minute and talk about some of the things that's kinda in a camera view here. Okay. All right, so, um, you know, out here standing on our wellness floor, um, I like to, when talking about it, I like to divide it into three sections. So this, this first section here, um, these machines are our selectorized machines. That means you don't have the free weights that you have to load onto a bar. Um, all these machines, you can actually choose the weight you want just by pulling a pin and reinserting it. And uh, we have it laid out to where um, machines for your upper body primarily are over on this side. Um, machines for your lower body are over on the other side and also here in the center. Um, these are life fitness machines. They're great. Um, they're really top of the line and you know, They've been around the facility for, for quite some time, but uh, you know, staff did a great job maintaining them and keeping them in, a good, in good shape. But um, really, you can get a complete full body workout just right here in this section without having to, to go to any other area of the floor. One of the things that, I, that I've noticed with these machines, they, they appear to be offering quite a bit of stretch, muscle stretch and that, that kind of thing. Uh, Sammy Giddens, a, a, a friend is behind me here. He's been working out on a number of these machines and I've noticed that uh, as he's doing that and uh, he's, he's stretching his upward muscles and downward muscles and all those kinds of things. 
you just don't have access to that at your home. No, no you know, there, there's a lot of those combo machines you can get if we all remember the Bowflex and things like that. And I mean, they're great and they have their place, but you really you can't get the full range of workout uh, with those machines and from activities at home that you can here in a facility like this with the, all these different machines. Um, you know, all these machines have great range of motion. Some of them uh, target, you know, specific muscle groups, but then others have um, some more compound movements so you can get an overall, you know, better workout. Well, we're going to try to hit as many of these three segments as we can get in a segment of our show. So as folks are listening from home uh, on the radio, maybe, or watching from home on the TV, whichever, if you're watching on TV, you can see some of them. If you're listening to us on the radio, uh, please remember to tune in to Channel 16 on Star Communications. You can be able to see this entire show. But I want to kind of move on down now to another segment uh, of this huge floor. Uh, that has all kinds of equipment in it and speak to some of the things that we're seeing as we move forward here. Right. We're talking uh, to Jared uh, here and we're moving through a facility here uh, at the YMCA and we're looking at equipment and as I just told you we had to relocate to another segment of equipment at the YMCA. Uh, Jared uh, uh, Barry is the executive director. Jared, tell us where we're at now and the kinds of weights and uh, resistance equipment. I really don't know what to call them, but uh, there's a lot of metal I'm looking at. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, so right now we are in the center section of our wellness floor. And, you know, this is the section we kind of like dub it as the free weight section because it does have the plates that you load onto the bars and load onto the machines, uh, you know, to increase or decrease the resistance. And, you know, this, if there's any section of the wellness floor that would be the most intimidating to, um, to new lifters or, mm -hmm. you know, those who are just now kind of entering into their, their you know, overall health and wellness journey, um, you know, it would be this section because there's a lot going on. There's a lot of weights. It looks like your typical gym equipment, you know, that we all, you know, think of whenever we hear the word gym. Um, but, you know, it's generally this is the area that's, it's, you know, maybe before some more, um, some more seasoned, you know, yeah. lifters, you know, it's an actual lifting, you know, muscle building section. Anybody can use it, but it does have a little bit of a, a barrier to entry compared to the previous section we were at with the selectorized machines. Um, those are very user friendly. Um, they're greater. They're great for um, a lot of retirement age uh, mm -hmm. people come in. It's it's you know everything is set up for you. All you do is adjust the weight. Whereas this section, you might have to do a little bit more. But um, you know if you're if you are curious about it, and want to get into it, you know that's why we have our wellness staff on hand and our personal trainers. They're around and they would love to be able to to help you out and kind of show you some of the equipment. So, so what I hear you saying, if, if I want to build bulk and work on that 23 inch bicep, mm -hmm. this may be the area that I need to be in. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. I mean, you can, you can, you can definitely um, get a little bit more out of it um, when you're working with some of these, uh, you know, different machines and equipment with the free weights. You can, you can do a little bit more, some more compound exercises that have a little more resistance and work on that progressive overload. And for those folks that, that may have a question about safety, I know with free weights, oftentimes you need somebody either to spot you or be, be close by. Uh, from what I hear you saying, there's, there's staff available and yeah. you can handle, uh, you would rather them let you know that they're fixing to do that rather than just taking a shot at it. Absolutely, yeah, nobody, a lot of us may want to take that chance. Uh, just might be quick and easy to get out of there and try to do it, but, but by all means, we we'll always try to be safe. And, and you know, that's why we have wellness staff um, on hand and available you know, throughout the day to assist members. The, the concept here is that what we're looking at is the progression of exercise equipment as we go down this floor uh, that gives everybody the opportunity to get where they need to be. Absolutely. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, really all age ranges, um, all ability levels, you know, they can get something out of exercising, you know, just about anywhere here on the floor. But, but you know, if we were looking at it in that way, you know, the first section we were at with the selectorized equipment, um, you know, it is, you know, more, more beginner user friendly um, than some of the equipment down here is, but it really does serve, you know, having this section does serve to really, you know, increase our range um, of those members that we can service here at the facility. One of the things we hadn't really got into that much, but I think it's important to mention now as we're talking about this particular segment, as we look at uh, the area and as folks look at this video of us talking, and it may be a month from now, maybe two, a year from now, 
one of the things I'm always uh, cognizant of is that uh, centers like this, particularly the YMCA has a, has a flagstaff barrier of this, pardon the pun, <laughs> but it's, it's one of those things that folks that are looking at moving here or an industry coming here or a business coming here, this is a good inducement, enticement for mm -hmm. folks to come. Yeah, it is. I mean, we, and we'll see more of the facility, but, but we really do have um, something for everyone here at the facility. Uh, you know, we have um, activities and programs for, for small children, for youth. Um, you know, we have, we've just opened our child watch area. So, you know, that's friendly to parents who might have smaller children who aren't quite old enough to take part in activities, you know, here in the, the facility, but we do have our child watch. They can go in there and have a good time, uh, spend, spend a little bit of time with our staff um, while their parents are enjoying their workout. And um, really, you know, we have we have marathon runners that come in and run on the treadmills. You know, if the weather's bad or if it's too hot outside or just to get that extra bit of training in, um, you know, and then we'll have um, right beside them, we'll have a brand new uh, member, brand new uh, per person who's brand new to exercise, really haven't maybe not done much of it in many, many years. Or, you know, we have a lot of um, young teenagers really starting to get into exercise and lifting and, and trying to stay healthy. We're going to, before we get through today, I want to talk a bit about that membership and the cost ratios and that kind of thing. But the thing that strikes me with, with what you're saying, this, this could be a huge plus also for some of our high school coaches and others that have students that may need some specialty work. Right. That they could come here for two or three hours and, and just kind of deal with a specific issue. Mm -hmm. That's right. We're going to have a, a wide range of group fitness classes. So that's that's one aspect of it. Um, it, it may focus, you know, on a certain type of, of exercise, may focus on a certain uh, muscle group or area if you want to work your lower body or upper body, which can be helpful, you know, can be sport specific, you know, a football lineman is going to need a different workout overall, you know, than, uh, than someone playing basketball, maybe, um, you know, there's just different areas of focus that, um, you know, really we're going to try to implement even more training opportunities to um, reach those different groups and to, to you know, help those young athletes out. We're going to uh, we're going to walk down to this okay. last segment in this uh, group here, give everybody time to kind of get readjusted. And we're going to try to pull in that information uh, as we go along. But we're going to look at the last segment. Jared, as we walk down the floor here, we're in the third segment of this w workout area where there's a lot of equipment. One of the things I'm noticing uh, is, a, is a lot of things like uh, treadmills and various other kinds of machines I'm not sure of. What are we seeing here and, and what kind of things could folks take advantage of? Okay, sure. Uh, this is our cardiovascular training area and um, we have just about anything and everything um, that you kind of associate with that. So, I mean, right here in front of me, this is a new step. Um, it's basically uh, kind of like an elliptical. It's it's very popular with some of our older members who may have some mobility issues. It, it's fairly easy to get in and out of. It's fairly easy to operate. Um, right behind you here are um, some of our, our bikes. These are seated bikes. So the seat to get on the equipment is a little bit lower than some of these other pieces of equipment that, that have the same overall motion. And then we've also got our, um, we've got our ellipticals. We have eight um, almost brand new treadmills. Um, it is basically kind of just roundabout. We have some uh, some side fit machines that are specifically focused on upper body. So, you know, working out your upper body, but also getting that cardiovascular workout at the same time. And uh, we try to keep a, a good range, you know, so that whatever our specific needs are, you know, we have something to meet that for every member. And one of the things that, that I'm looking at too is these are commercial rated machines. It's, you know, you see a lot of stuff that you can buy and, and take home and put in your bedroom or your workout room or what have you, but this, these are high dollar machines here. They are, they are, they are um, very, very expensive. Um, you know, we, you know, this is not something we work on or really do a whole lot to ourselves just because, you know, it requires a professional. There's a lot of what goes into these machines. Um, but they, they are great, they, they last forever, and um, the way they have them set up is very user friendly. And a lot of maintenance issues, but everything's taken care of. You got people to check them, make sure they're all calibrated and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So we're going to move on and take a look at some of the other parts okay. of this huge facility called the YMCA in Clinton. Right. Sounds great. We'll be back in a moment. Thank you for being with us here on the We Should Know Show. We will be right back after these messages. 
at home or away, knowing who is at your door is priceless. Star Communications is here to help with its doorbell security camera by Skybell. Live viewing and two-way audio equips you with the ability to always see and greet anyone that shows up at your door. If this is the kind of confidence you are looking for, call Star Communications today at 1-800-706-6538 to learn more about this intelligent security that you can always depend on. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are coming to you on site from the YMCA in Clinton, North Carolina. If you hadn't been here, you need to come here. You need to see what's going on. I think you probably want to be a part of it. We're talking with the executive director of the Y here in Clinton, Jared Barrier. Jared, thank you for taking time to talk about this uh, facility what it's kind of morphed into from the wellness center of which you were part of, and now you're directing this observation. One of the things that strikes me is the different kinds of things that are going on here. In the background, folks, you'll probably see something called a racket court. Uh, just being here today and kind of seeing a lot of activity in and out, this is a heavily used room. Mm -hmm. What is, is what goes? What is a racquetball court? Okay, so, so racquetball, uh, you know, it's one of those things, we don't see it a lot around Clinton. Um, but you know it's a it's a great uh, great workout, great sport to play. A lot of people could kind of played it. It's a lifelong thing. You know, kind of like golf and tennis is. It's, you know, kind of a playoff tennis. Uh, basically, it is indoor tennis. You could almost without the net. Um, but you know, racket, rubber ball. You can play. Um, you know, two people can play at once. Four people can play at once. And I mean, we can even use this racquetball court uh, for a sport called volleyball, which is volleyball in a racquetball court. You can bounce the ball off the walls and don't just have to go straight over the net. Um, but racquetball, it's a great workout. Um, it's a lot of fun to play. It's not too difficult to learn um, as some sports out there are. One of the things that strikes me with this is, is you need to be in fairly good condition to get in there and start whacking that ball because when these guys walk out or whomever it may be, I can tell they, they've had a huge workout. Absolutely. I mean, it is fast paced. Um, you know, you get in there and if you're a beginner, you can be overwhelmed pretty quick, but um, it's great if you can you can link up with somebody who really knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They can kind of show you the ropes and, and it's always going to be a great workout. Is this normally a tandem kind of thing where two people play or do you see more just one people play, one person play? For the most part, um, there's multiple people playing. Uh, it's a lot more fun if you can have a partner to play with. Uh, but just like tennis, you can play um, singles, you know, one on one. You can also play two on two. Um, so really, I mean, we, we have people who come in and practice by themselves quite often. Um, that might be a good idea for somebody trying to learn uh, just to kind of get a feel for the ball because that ball will come off the wall very quickly. <laughs> It'll yeah. surprise you sometimes. Well, and we can tell as we've been standing here in the background, it, you can hear that ball hit the, the uh, window there and it sounds like it's going to crack it because it's yeah. moving pretty fast. It is. It is. We're going to move forward to another location now and look at a actually a basketball court and there's uh, activity going on there. We want to capture that while we're here. Absolutely. Jared, we're in the area now that is uh, like a basketball court. Um, and we kind of let folks know as we're talking, uh, there's some basketball being played behind us. So if we have to field a ball occasionally <laughs> as we're talking, we'll do that. But uh, here at the YMCA, this particular room, although it's got basketball goals in it, as often as you were saying off camera, was uh, is used for many other things to include something called uh, pickleball. That's right. That's right. So, so this is a brand new floor here in the basketball court that was put in last year. And we had them lay in the um, the lines for pickleball. And you know, pickleball is it's a fairly new sport. It's really caught on in the last few years. And similar to tennis, um, you know, it's played primarily outdoors. You can play it indoors too. And it, it can be, you know, singles playing or it can, you can play in doubles. And uh, said just like tennis, but it's with a wiffle ball and a wooden paddle. Wow. And from what I hear, it's a lot of fun. And I, I think that's something that folks probably was not aware that could be done in this facility that can be right here, right now, if you have people interested. Right. So yeah. should they contact you coming in the door if that's something they're interested in? So maybe you can get a list sure. of players? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Anybody who is, is interested, uh, give us a call, email us, come by, just let us know you're interested and we'll, we'll let you know whenever we um, are ready to get something going because it is something this summer I'd love to see happen. 
So uh, very quickly, what other things can happen in here other than the obvious what we see, basketball and pickleball? So we also um, have the ability to play volleyball in here and uh, full size volleyball. We have the lines for volleyball. Uh, we also have the mounts to put in the standards for volleyball. And we'll probably also run quite a bit of programming, the occasional group exercise class in here. And then when we get into uh, more of our children's programming, maybe next summer, we'll probably have some activities in here as well. Sounds great. We're gonna move on to another location then. All right. It looks like a lot of activities could go on here, but I believe you said this is the aerobic mm -hmm. room. To, is that primarily what happens here, or is there other uh, programs that happen? Yeah, so it's called our aerobic studio or our group fitness studio. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, if we're having some type of uh, group exercise class, um, you know, 90% of the time it's going to take place in here. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, that's not all we do. This is just at times it's just additional space. If there's not programming going on, it's additional space for members to come in. We have some equipment in the closet. Uh, they can bring equipment from out on the wellness floor in here. And, if you know, if they want a little more privacy while they're working out, you know, they can have it in here. If they want some mirrors to look at to make sure their form and everything is right, mm -hmm. um, they can do that in here as well. But, um, you know, right now we've already got some group fitness classes on the schedule, mm -hmm. um, you know, Members can find that schedule on our Facebook page. We also have them posted up here at the facility. And, um, you know, we'll be having everything from uh, yoga to a Zumba style class. Um, we'll have different aerobics classes, basically like a, some, some low intensity and some high intensity classes. Does these classes fill up pretty rapidly once the information gets out? I mean, did you see that when you were here with the wellness center? Did, was that something that was a high demand? It was. Uh, there were specific classes that were, you know, just about full all the time. Um, you know, the classes that really draw in the most people are our evening classes. You know, mm -hmm. those, you know, starting anywhere from 530 to 7 o'clock. Um, those were usually pretty full. A lot of people wanted to come in and work out, you know, after they get off work. Um, but, you know, we there's usually some availability throughout the week for different classes. Um, and, you know, we're hoping to be able to offer classes early in the morning um, or maybe even, you know, we'll try to do some outdoors or in the basketball court. So if they are filling up regularly, we could try to create some additional classes or have some additional space to accommodate everybody. So when we look at things like yoga and Pilates and those kinds of things, oftentimes those are uh, classes now that is being recommended for folks to just to deal with stress, to just relax and those kinds of things. Does this room offer that capability to kind of be a quiet space and that kind of thing? Yeah, it, it is. I mean, it has some good soundproofing in here. Um, you know, we are kind of off by ourselves in this room um, with the door shut. It is quiet. We can we can set some some lighting to kind of enhance that, you know, that mood and that feeling. And, um, you know, we're going to try to offer a good wide range of that type of class that can really be kind of help us focus on our, our mental health and um, help us relax a little bit. Does most of your instructors for those kinds of courses, are they people that are local or do you have to pull folks in from outside the area? So it, it looks like, you know, most of our instructors now are going to be local um, with the exception of a couple. And I know there's probably a lot of previous uh, wellness center members who will be happy to hear that, you know, we're going to have several um, instructors from the wellness center returning. And so we're excited about that and excited to bring them into the Y family and, mm -hmm. and um, you know, add them into our programming list. That's, that's kind of critical, I think, for folks to understand that oftentimes you, you've got people that live in the communities here, they live in the neighborhoods, it's folks that they know that are doing these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and, you know, we have a lot of previous instructors who have been doing it for quite some time, you know, in the community. They've been around and, and have developed a, a good following and everybody trusts them, you know, in their classes. And they know that they're going to run a, a great class and, and they're very knowledgeable and they can be there as a resource as well. Is, is this room one of the rooms or do you use all of them? I know we had a conversation uh, earlier a month or so ago about uh, children and, and times when parents could bring children and have some free time if they wanted to work out or they need to do something for an hour or so. Is this one of those rooms you would use for that purpose or do you use the pool and other areas? Well, so so primarily right now, all our child watch is going to be taking place in our child watch area. Okay. Um, and that is a new addition to the facility. Okay. Um, it, it, if you remember the, the size of child watch in the wellness center previously, it was about a third or a quarter 
quarter of the size of our space now. So we have a great space. And occasionally I think we'll probably have some youth and children's activities in here. We might bring them in to play a game or, or some type of physical activity. But for the most part, you know, this is reserved for those that are actually here to work out. But the child watch is a separate kind of location than this. So we'll actually go by there and just let you look at that and make a commentary on that one. Sure. Uh, and then we're going to go from there to the pool area, which I think is going to attract a lot of folks. Absolutely. Let's transition down that way. Okay. So Jared, we've walked into an area here that you refer to as Child Watch. Mm -hmm. That's that's an interesting title, but it, it looks like a, a well-lit area, a very safe looking area. What happens here? Okay, so, so this area is for, uh, is for the children. I mean, it's, it's a space, uh, totally dedicated to them. Uh, so that we're not having to share too many spaces, but you know, we, we recognize the need for a, a nice robust area because uh, we have a lot of, you know, a lot of members, um, you know, previously with the wellness center and currently now with the Y have a lot of you know families mm -hmm. that have come in and joined. And um, you know, it can be tough to get away and for us parents to focus on our health and wellness, because, uh, you know, we focus so much time and energy on our on our children, which, you know, and rightfully so. But, um, you know, we have this space here um, to, you know, be able to engage and watch your kids while you're working out. So um, all members with the household membership can drop their kids off here in Child Watch while they go and complete their workout and uh, we'll engage with them. We'll, we'll keep them occupied we'll, and we'll have a good time. That's, that's a great opportunity. I'd never really thought about it, but you're exactly right. I think a lot of folks would say, I want to go to the wellness center, but I've got to get somebody to watch my children. I don't have time. Plus, this is right next door to where we were just at, mm -hmm. where they would be working out or, or involved in aerobics or whatever it may be. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's in the same building. All they got to do, if they want to run over here and take a look, right. they can look through these huge windows. Yes. Yeah. It's wide open to it. Right. Yeah. And that, that was one of the ideas behind some of the renovations we did. We, we really want to increase visibility, you know, because, you know, as a parent, you're more comfortable if you can easily, you know, lay eyes on your children. Yeah. And, um, you know, the space before the facility was great, but it was just it was much smaller. So this nice open space has really been a big improvement. And the and lighting is, is outstanding yeah. in here. I, you've really done a reconfiguration on the lighting and mm -hmm. it, you can not only see and it's, it's clear, it's, it's clean. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I just, you know, I'd encourage people to kind of build that into the part of their thinking when they're looking at a membership right. and uh, signing up. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it, like I said, it's, it's included in all household memberships. So we're going to continue and grab a couple of folks and talk to them, and then we're going to go to the pool. All right. Sounds great. Hello, Asa. Thank you for taking time to talk to us a minute. I want to get your uh, comment on the YMCA. This is a uh, facility has been here, but it's a new facility. And I noticed you're a very aggressive member uh, in working out. Tell us why it's important to you. This facility is important to me because it's, it's allowed me to grow at, bigger as a person and as get bigger as my personality, meeting new people. Yes, sir. You always run into some good friends at the YMCA in Clinton, North Carolina. We're here and I happen to run into Sammy Giddens and Nina Giddens. You guys have been back in Sampson County a pretty good time and now here you are at the Y. Why have you gotten involved with the Y in Clinton? I know you were living in Raleigh. Tell us a little bit about that. Sammy, I'll start with you. Well, we grew up in Sampson County, lived in Raleigh 48 years. And when we decided to come back, we uh, were very surprised at the, uh, the wellness center here in Sampson County. Uh, so we joined at that time because we had been a member in Raleigh at the wellness center since 1986. So we've worked out basically all of our married uh, life and uh, we wanted to continue doing that. And that had a lot to do with our decision to move back here. Now, what's, what's your thoughts on the transition now to the YMCA and the facility? Have you seen some positive changes? What's your expectations? Well, it's very similar to what it was. And we're seeing a lot more family activity, which is nice. It's good to see young folks working out. But it's good to see some of our old wellness center members back here with us at the YMCA and hope to see more. Well, it's good to see you guys working out here, and, and, and I want to compliment you on staying fit and maintaining that uh, agility that is so important to all of us. Yeah, it is. But, uh, you know, the thing we do is uh, our diet is very important. Uh, 
first thing we decide every day is what we're going to eat that day. So that's one important thing. Another thing we work out because we train English pointers and English setters and we ride horses uh, almost daily. So that, that keeps us fit to do the things that we enjoy. It's good to see both of you. Now, you want a last word on this conversation? No. Yeah. <laughs> Great to see you guys. Thank you for being with us here on the We Should Know Show. We will be right back after these messages. To get the most out of your electronic devices, you need a strong internet connection and a protected home Wi-Fi network. You need high-speed internet from Star. Star has the fastest, most affordable high-speed internet service available for all your devices. We have no long-term contracts or high-pressure sales. Our service speaks for itself, and switching is hassle-free. We take care of everything with free installation from a local company. High-speed internet from Star. Internet at the speed of life. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We should know it's on the air. We're also on site at the YMCA in Clinton. For the radio folks that are listening to us out there, we're now transitioned to another location at the YMCA here in Clinton. And we're standing beside of, and just behind us, is a huge indoor pool. It's about 40 by 80 feet. And this is a unique uh, facility in the sense that it does have this pool in it and it's open to the public. And we're going to get more information about that uh, from the executive director of the YMCA, Jared Barrier. Jared, we've had a great day just kind of touring through the YMCA and looking at a lot of options people have. And, and I'm just kind of... Uh, amazed at the number of, of pieces of equipment, the folks that we have talked to, uh, the various age groups, uh, the children's area that we just visited a while ago is, is a unique piece. Yeah. Let's talk about the pool here for a minute. This is a facility that a lot of folks may not be aware of this pool's here. Swimming is a critical part for folks to, to make sure that either they know how to swim or at the least make sure their children can swim. Absolutely. Uh, tell us the kinds of activities you plan for here and tell us a little bit about the pool. Okay, sure. So, so this is the, the only indoor pool in Sampson County. Uh, you know, to find a, a closer pool, you're having to go to Fayetteville, Goldsboro, or even down to Wilmington. And, uh, you know, there, there really is uh, a lot that we could do with this space. Over the years, a lot has been done. I mean, we host, um, you know, the local high school swim teams. They've used the facility in the past. We hope they'll be able to use the facility again. Um, there's also a youth swim team. You know, these are competitive teams, but, you know, we we have um, plenty of time set aside for everybody just to come in if they want to get in the pool as a recreational activity or if they want to do it as a, a fitness activity. Um, you know, we're going to have ample time set aside for members to do that. Um, we've got plenty of members who come in and swim laps. Others just want to bring their kids in and play in the pool. And, you know, we're going to accommodate all of that. Uh, you know, currently we, we're a little bit limited because of the guard shortage that I mentioned, mm -hmm. um, but we're hoping to within the within the week be able to increase our hours that the pool is open because uh, the, the demand is very high. And so we're wanting to be able to provide ample opportunity uh, for everybody to get in the pool. But, um, you know, besides just the typical the competitive side and the, the swimming, we have come we have plenty of lap swimmers. Um, you know, we're also going to have some fitness classes that are based in the pool. Uh, you know, we have your, your standard water aerobics. Uh, we have some classes on the schedule now that can be found on Facebook, uh, but we're going to increase those uh, options as well. Um, we have these floating yoga mats called boga boards, and we're going to have some yoga based classes on those and also some high intensity and low intensity. Um, and speaking from experience, those classes are a lot of fun. Um, plan to get wet since you are going to be in a pool and there's a lot of balance that goes into those classes. So it's a little, it can be kind of challenging, but um, you know, we're also going to um, be offering swim lessons. Um, we're hoping that those are going to be able to start sometime in the next few weeks, um, definitely around the 1st of July. But if you're interested in swim lessons, I encourage everybody to go ahead and, and call in and let us know so we can get your name on a list. Um, and those swim lessons, you know, initially we may be more limited, but eventually we'd love to offer those swim lessons from uh, six months old all the way up through, um, you know, through adulthood. Um, really, we I have adults ask me, you know, fairly frequently if we could do swim lessons for them. And of course we can. Um, we'll do classes. We can also do private swim lessons as well. But, um, you know, we, we really we're, we're open to hosting anything and everything. Um, we, you know, 
we uh, have the space available for birthday parties. So that's something else that will begin soon. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully within the next month, we'll be able to tar start taking reservations for birthday parties here in the pool. One of the things that fascinates me with the, with your comments is that the variety of things that you're willing to offer. I mean, the flexibility. I mean, you, I heard you mention if you are a little bit don't want to be around a lot of people learning how to swim, you can actually get private swimming lessons. Absolutely. And if you if you want to have something for your six month old child, mm -hmm. uh, you can do that as well. I mean, that's pretty phenomenal. I, I don't really know a whole lot of places that offers that uniqueness. You know, there, there's not many. Um, it, it's fairly common with YMCA's, especially in you know larger uh, populations. But uh, that's something that, that we are working on previously, wanting to try to get you know expand that range of swim lessons. So you know we weren't kids weren't having to wait until they were four, five, six years old to start you know at least being familiar with the water, learning how to be safe around the water. That's the key. Uh, you know, not every child is going to be able to swim by a certain age, but we can at least start teaching them very young how to be safe um, when they're making contact with water, you know, with either at a pool, at a lake, at the beach. Um, you know, we have a lot of water around us here in Eastern North Carolina. We, we talked a little bit of off camera uh, earlier today about how your relationship uh, is with uh, Dana Hall with uh, Public Works in the county and Jonathan Allen uh, with Public uh, Recreation, should I say Public Works, Public uh, uh, the Recreation Departments in the county and city. Is that continuing to be the kind of thing we're talking about here where you've got an indoor pool, there's not an indoor pool anywhere else, and you can segue a relationship with these two recreation department heads? Mm -hmm. it, th that's the hope. You know, we want to be able to work with um, both departments as often and as frequently as possible. Uh, you know, really, the, the you know, our mission is to, you know, really bring and increase youth opportunities here mm -hmm. in Sampson County. And um, however we can work with um, the city and county rec departments to do that, I mean, I'm on board. We would love to have those conversations, love to make it happen. Are you aware now that we have competitive swimming as far as a actual sport where high schools compete with other high schools with swimmers? Yes, yes. So there are, so the, the, all the, the local high schools that have a team, they all come together to practice in the facility. And we've also hosted meets in the past. And so I hope we can continue to do so. Um, you know, they'll practice several days a week here in the facility. And I think in years past, we would have, we would host, you know, up to five swim meets from, uh, you know, really kind of regional schools coming in to compete. That's just kind of interesting because I hadn't thought about the, the sport part and the competitive part of having a, a sport about swimming and the uh, idea of high schools maybe going to regional kinds of meets and that kind of thing. So that's that's really something that's happening. Yes, yes it is. And so, you know, we're, we're looking forward to this fall. That's when they begin. And, uh, you know, we're hoping we can host them again and, and maybe even host some of those meets. Well, we're going we're going to do whatever we can to kind of get the word out. Go over uh, quickly. We got a, a minute or so left here. I want to try to get some idea about membership and how a person gets involved. They can do this online. They can come here. Uh, what are we looking at cost wise? Sure. OK. Yeah. So so right now you can join online or here at the facility um, membership rates. We have them here, um, you know, easily accessible. You could also find them online. But you know, if I was going to join as an individual uh, by myself, I would be paying um, forty-seven dollars a month. Um, you know, membership cost is going to depend basically kind of on what type of membership and the amount of members on your account. Mm -hmm. So you know, um, I have a family membership, and uh, you know that that covers myself, my wife, and my two children. Um, you know, if a couple were to join by themselves, uh, you know, a senior couple. For example, mm -hmm. you know, that's going to be $66 per month. A single senior individual is going to be $39 a month. Mm -hmm. And then we have a special rate for young adults age 18 to 26. Um, you know, it's a little bit cheaper. But, you know, one thing to, to mention is we also offer um, a very solid range of financial assistance. Mm -hmm. So um, that application process can be done online and um, come into the facility and ask us, ask us questions about it if you have them. We look forward to uh, coming back, talking to you again Absolutely. soon and finding out what's going on. Thank you for the Thank you, uh, job you're doing and hang in there. Of course. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for being with us today. We look forward to seeing you each and every week right here on We Should Know, bringing you information, education about things that we should know more about. Stay tuned. We'll be back next week.
Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of We Should Know with host J.W. Simmons. If you have a question, comment, or suggestion regarding this or any episode, please send your emails to we should know edu at gmail.com. And remember to tune in every Tuesday at 2.30 for another informative episode of We Should Know.